Hello and welcome back. Well, today's project's a little bit different. Today I'm going to be working in this electrical box here in the new shed. This electrical box will hold the isolating switches for the compressor and the dust extractor. It also terminates network cables coming from the house. And I'm going to add a low voltage mechanism for starting up the dust extractor. So that allows the dust extractor to be started from any of the blast gates. In one of my recent videos, I did some dust collection upgrades to my miter saw, and that worked really well. But I have to run an extension lead into this compartment to get the dust extractor running. That's a bit of a pain in the backside, to be honest. Anyway, I've installed these points on the wall here. So one for the dust extractor, one for the compressor. And the wires come in through the side here and go up the wall to the panel. Firstly, we have a cable here. This is the feed in, so the power coming in. The next one is the dust extractor cable. And the one at the back there is the one for the compressor. Now I've got these two cables that come from the house for network connections. And then this cable here goes over to the network router for the Wi-Fi. I made up this panel of camera. It's a bit of 12 millimeter plywood. Got some holes cut out for some switches. The cables will come through these holes and it gets bolted in each corner here with a nut. These are the two isolating switches. One of them for the compressor and the other one for the dust extractor. So these are screwed to this backing panel and there are holes through here for the wires to come through. I'm also adding a power point up here as well, but I won't be able to add that yet. I'll put that in later on once these other switches are all wired up. The panel fits in there like that. The cables come through those holes and I put it onto those studs into the corners. Now I don't really want to bore everyone with wiring this thing up. So I've wired up those two switches and I have the wires coming out the top for the power point socket. And there are a few other things I need to put on here. You can see here I've wired up the power point and now I'm working on a earth wire that will earth the casing here. So that's put on with um, brass nuts and tightened up. I'm screwing on the PoE and Wi-Fi connector. And now I'm going to terminate these cables with RJ45 plugs. This is a little bit fidgety, particularly with Cat6 cable, but got there in the end. I tested out the cables at both ends with a tester. And it works all well, so they get connected to the module. I've gone as far as I can at the moment because I'm waiting on some parts to come. I'm going to add a bit of DIN rail onto this board around about here. On the DIN rail, I'm going to add a 12 volt contactor. Next to it, I'm going to add a DIN rail power supply to power the contactor. Now this is for the low voltage circuit, which will power up the extractor fan. A few weeks later, the parts arrive. This is the contactor here, has 12 volt coil in it. The feed will go in the top and come out the bottom and go to the extractor fan. This is the power supply. Again, 12 volts to feed the coil onto the contactor. And this was a lot bigger than what I thought it was going to be, but I'm hoping it'll fit into the cabinet. Put those two components onto the DIN rail. The low voltage from the power supply comes out there and goes into these points here on the contactor. I'm marking out where this needs to be so I can screw the DIN rail to the backing board. And that's what I do there. Now I can't get my level in here so I just have to do it by eye and put the second screw in. I'm drilling two holes here for the cabling to come through and to work in with these components. The panel is unbolted, so I can get behind there and to poke the wires through the holes. This hole at the top's a bit small, so I need to make that a bit bigger so I can get both wires through. I had to do a bit of untangling around the back here to make sure the wires are tidy at the back. 
The panel is put back on the studs and the nuts are just hand tightened to hold the panel in place. I fitted and wired up the components off camera and now I'm finally bolting down this panel because I don't need to go into the back of it anymore. The front of this switch is screwed on. Now I have a feed coming into the top of the contactor here and that comes from the switch and there is a link that goes over and feeds the power supply. There is also the neutral that comes into the power supply. The output will be in the bottom here which will go to the extractor fan when the system is energized. We are ready to test this out and I have a little fly lead here just temporary from the power supply to the low voltage side of the coil here and that will allow us to test this out. The other thing is I've just put some temporary labels on these switches here so let's give it a go. Well that runs pretty good and I turn it off with that switch. Now this little temporary wire here will be taken off and there will be the wire that goes out to all of the glass gates that will come in through here and be connected up. Now I need to drill a hole in the wall up here so that I can feed the wires through. And they go through the cabinet, through these holes in the wall and poke out the other side where all the blast gates are. This is the furthest away dropper, the one for the floor sweep or future floor sweep. And you can see I've put some wire clips on the back and that's going to hold the wire quite nicely. I've also used the wire clips on this top plate here all the way along the wall. Now where the wires need to be joined, I'm going to put a junction box there. It's probably not necessary, but it will make it a lot tidier. This is the dropper that goes to the blast gate for the miter saw. I twist those wires together and then I install some wire connectors. The wires are all put into the junction box and the lid is screwed down. Again, you can see here I've used the wire clips on the back of the piping for the cables. This is where I drilled the hole through the wall and there's about four cables that get all wired together here. So again, that's put into a junction box and the lid is screwed down. I'm finishing up the wiring inside the cabinet here for the low voltage. We have the positive output here from the transformer goes over to the side of the coil and then the negative side goes all the way out down to all our blast gates, returns back in and goes to the negative side here. Now here's something a little odd. The output from the transformer is 12 volts which is expected. However, when I go over to the blast gate and measure the voltage over there, I get 25 and a half volts. I get this on all of the blast gates. Now, I don't know what's happening here. I don't know how it's gone from 12 volts to 25. Maybe someone can let me know in the comments about that. But I just thought it was a bit odd. Anyway, we're going to test it out. This is where the micro switch will be. Connect those wires together and the system starts up nicely and then once released the system winds down so i'm going to say that's a success and that works pretty good next we'll move on to doing the micro switches on the blast gates oh and about that cabinet i've actually put a lock in here so that is all secure and can't be open without the key so here's the plan. The wires here at the blast gates will be connected to a micro switch which will be mounted there and then there'll be a bracket on the slider and that'll interact with that micro switch. So when the slider moves the dust extractor will turn on. I have three micro switches here. I only need two at the moment and they come with two brackets. Now the bracket is an L bracket and what I've done on this other one, I've flattened it out. There's a couple of holes in here that I may be able to use and that will mount onto the blast gate nicely. The micro switch will be attached to the blast gate here and I've got this piece of aluminium that I've just roughed out and that will be mounted to the slider there and that will be used to open the blast gate. 
off camera, I tidied the piece up on the belt grinder in the garage and screw it to the slider and then I test it out and that's good. Next part is to mount the micro switch. Again, just screwing it into the plywood there in the right position. Give that a test and then I work out the length of the wire I need and that's cut to the right length. I fixed some terminals on the end of the wires here and I use a soldering iron to solder those terminals on. I've also put some heat shrink on here as well and I use the heat gun to shrink that down to make it nice and tidy. The wires are connected to the micro switch, that looks nice and tidy and the mechanism works well. Here is a bit of a top view of what we've done and we're going to test it out. That runs the dust extractor nicely and then we can turn it off by closing the blast gate. Off camera I've done exactly the same on my second blast gate for the miter saw and we're going to test that as well. It works really well and there is a lot of suction here. This works absolutely fantastic. When it's time to shut it down just close the blast gate. Now I have a few more of these micro switches to add but I haven't finished the plumbing and the other bits that I need. In the corner here this is going to be a floor sweep so I need to put a blast gate in here and make up the floor sweep. That'll be in another video. There is this Y at the top which needs to go over to the lay for when I'm sanding so I haven't done that yet and again another blast gate's required. Then we have the one coming down the wall which is going to be for the bandsaw and for cleaning down the lathe. So there's still quite a bit of work to do but I have two blast gates running with the automatic system to start the dust extractor. I'm going to call this video done for now and we'll work on those other things in another video. I hope everyone has a great day and once again thanks for watching.